So this is really fairly um, fascinating research. And this is from a paper published in the New England Journal of Medicine just this year. This slide is from the editorial, and then uh, in a minute I'll show you some of the slides from the uh, study. So what this is saying is that you can have a normal cell and it has normal activity of the PARP1 enzyme as well as the BRCA protein. So if there's DNA damage, that gets repaired and everything's fine. You can have a cell that has a mutation in BRCA1 such that you have a cancer, so you have a hereditary mutation, you have a second mutation in the normal allele, so the BRCA1 is completely turned off. Um, but if the PARP system is working, um, even though this isn't, you'll still get repair and the cell will su survive. And in this case, if it's a malignant cell, it will, it will keep growing. If you have a PARP inhibitor, let's say you take your drug and you're going to block the PARP enzyme now, but the tumor has active BRCA protein, it will continue to repair and continue to grow. But if you block both pathways, if you have no expression of your BRCA1 or 2 protein, and then you put in a drug and you block the PARP enzyme, then all of a sudden there's too much DNA breaks, and that results in that cell not being able to divide, and you get cell death. So you can go from a cancer cell growing here to one that cannot sustain itself and then it dies. So the theory is if we give patients who have tumors from BRCA1 or 2 mutations PARP inhibitors, that should treat their cancer. So that was the theory and um, turns out that that was fairly accurate. So they've done studied, uh, studies in cell culture and this was one in uh, mice where they took a um, tumor that had blocked out BRCA2 um, protein. So they had genetically unstable BRCA2 deficient tumor cell, injected it into the mouse. If they did not do anything else, then the tumor grew. If they gave a PARP inhibitor, then there was no tumor growth. Okay, so that was proof of principle there. So that was very promising. So then they said, well, let's try that in patients. But before I get to that, here's a slide that just is another way to look at it. And in this case, you have a PARP inhibitor here, and then they're adding in chemotherapy. So here they're giving a platinum chemotherapy that's causing DNA strand breaks, and then adding in the PARP inhibitor in the presence of someone who does not have the BRCA1 or 2 protein active, and then you'll get cell death. So. Uh, the last study I'll show will look at one that added in chemotherapy to the PARP inhibitor. The first one, though, which was just this New England Journal article, um, just gave patients the PARP inhibitor, and they gave one called Olaparib, uh, and this was an oral agent for them. Um, here was the study. They looked at 60 patients, and this was a phase one study. So they're really just looking at toxicity. They're not so much looking at response rates, but they did report them because um, it was fairly impressive. Um, and uh, the toxicity of these so far appears to be very mild. So you don't have the typical chemo-related toxicity, and in fact, they were able to increase the dose quite a bit before they really ran it in, into much trouble. And this is really the meat of the paper. So if you look at this line here, or rather this line here, so they took patients that had germline mutations in BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene, and that had developed ovary, breast, or prostate cancer. Okay, So we would expect that the cancers have total lack of that protein because you have the second mutation in the um, uh, alleles to result in a tumor. And there were 19 of those patients. So they gave them uh, the Olaparib PARP inhibitor, and this was their responses. So partial or complete radiologic response in nine of the 19, and most of those were patients with ovary cancer. And then if you look at other ways to look at response, stable disease, tumor marker response, altogether they had 12 responses out of 19, nine ovary cancer, two breast cancer, and one prostate cancer. Now these patients are all heavily pretreated. They've all been through chemo, they have metastatic disease, and you give a single agent PARP inhibitor and you're still getting responses. That's pretty impressive and very, very uh, fascinating. 
And this just depicts some of the responses here. Here's a CAT scan. You can't really see this very well, I don't think, but here's the tumor here just under the abdomen. And then after the PARP inhibitor has shrunk down, um, here's another one in abdominal area that actually disappeared, went into complete remission. This is looking at the CA125 uh, tumor marker level. So pre-treatment, very high, and then with treatment comes down, and the duration of response is actually fairly reasonable. Some patients had even uh, over a year of uh, durable response. And here's looking at another way to say how many had responses and how many did not. So the red here are the number of patients with progressive disease, and then these colors are people who've had responses as well up to 80 weeks um, worth of, of response. So very uh, um, powerful result. So the authors in their conclusion said that olaparib um, inhibits the PARP enzyme. It has anti-tumor activity in cancers that are associated with the BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation carriers and is very well tolerated. So that leads to part three. Any questions there? Okay. And you're lucky because I only have three parts, so <laughs> let's see if I can find it. So this now is a study um, combining a PARP inhibitor with chemotherapy. And these are slides from Dr. O'Shaughnessy who presented this study at the ASCO meeting um, this year. So in this study, um, they used a uh, PARP inhibitor called BSI-201 from BIPAR Sciences. This is an intravenous uh, agent. Um, and uh, they, they were doing a phase two study. So they were looking at um, toxicity, but they also wanted to look a little bit more at responses. So this was a multi-center open label trial, and it was a randomized study between chemotherapy with gemcitabine and carboplatin in both groups, with or without BSI-201, in patients with triple negative breast cancer. So they didn't have to have a hereditary BRCA1 or 2 mutation. They just had to have triple negative breast cancer. And they looked at a clinical benefit rate, which is basically combining a responses plus stable disease. Um, and then they also secondarily looked at progression-free survival and overall survival. Um, let's see, so we'll just skip that one. So here's the schema. They had a, 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 wanted to enroll 120 patients, got randomized to gem carbo uh, days one and day eight, repeated every 21 days, versus the, that regimen plus the BSI-201, which was given on day one, four, eight, and 11, of each 21-day cycle. And you, patients could stay on that until they progressed from disease. And if you got randomized to the, non, to the standard arm, you could cross over um, if you progressed on that and get the PARP inhibitor. So this study uh, just uh, finished up enrolling earlier this year. And uh, of the 123 that they looked at, 116 actually went on trial. Um, and let's see, and they're, they're going to, I don't think this has been published yet. They'll do the final analysis, I think, later this year. The two arms were pretty well divided um, here, 62, 61 patients. Mo ma majority were um, Caucasian, um, pretty good performance <laughs> status. Most of the metastatic sites were lung, liver. They did allow brain uh, metastasis. Um, and again, very heavily pre-treated population. So most people had uh, some form of chemotherapy before going on this trial. They did a sub-study where they looked at the expression of the PARP enzyme in these tumors, and uh, you could see that in the triple negative breast cancer, the PARP enzyme is upregulated. So it makes sense that we would try to block that with an inhibitor. And in the control um, tissue, they did not see that.